Good morning. We have already defined the magnitude of torque as equal to Rf sine theta, where F is the magnitude of the force causing the torque, R is the magnitude of the position vector from the axis rotation to where the force acts on the object, theta is the angle between the direction of the force and the direction of the position vector R, and we can find the direction of the torque using the right-hand rule. Today we learn about the equation for torque which uses the cross product. Cross product? Yeah, we learned the cross product last year? I think it was two years ago. Whenever it was, I, I never thought we'd actually use the cross product for anything. Flippin' physics! Does the cross product use matrices? Yep, that's the one. <laughs> cool! That means the cross product is actually useful! Yep, the cross product is very useful. Torque, as a vector, equals the cross product of R, the position vector from the axis of rotation to the point where the force acts on the object, and F, the force causing the torque. Please realize the cross product is not commutative. In other words, torque equals the cross product of the position vector and the force. However, torque does not equal the cross product of the force and the position vector. But a cross B equals the negative of B cross A, right, Mr. P? Yes, Bo, that is correct. Now, typically, it has been at least one orbit of the Earth around the Sun since you last did the cross product. <laughs> so let's do a general example to review how the cross product works. Bobby, please read the problem, and Billy, please translate the problem. There are no words to read, just... Letters and numbers. Right, but you can still read it. Okay. I guess I'll say when vector A equals negative I plus J minus 2K and vector B equals 2I minus 3J plus 4K, determine A cross B. I don't really think there's anything to translate, is there, Mr. B? I can agree with that, Billy. Please start solving the problem. Sure. Okay. I know the solution involves a 3x3 three three matrix, however, I do not remember how to set that up. It's the determinant form of the matrix. The first row has the unit vectors i, j, and k. And the next two rows have the coefficients of the position and force vectors, so negative 1, 1, negative yeah. 2, and 2, negative 3, and 4. And that equals three smaller determinants. Um, we start with a two by two determinant matrix multiplied by unit vector i, and in order to figure out what goes in that matrix, we cross out the row and column that the unit vector i is in in the original three by three determinant matrix. So the first two by two determinant matrix equals uh, one, negative two, and negative three, four. And then we add the next 2 by 2 determinant matrix times unit vector j, crossing out the row and column with the unit vector j in it in the original 3 by 3 determinant matrix leaves us with negative 1, negative 2, and 2, 4. And then actually, we remember, we need to subtract every other 2 by 2 matrix. So it is a negative in front of yeah. the 2 by 2 matrix that goes with the j unit vector. Thanks, Bobby. And then we have plus a 2 by 2 determinant matrix times unit vector k. Crossing out the row and column with unit vector k leaves us with negative 1, 1, and 2, negative 3. Well done so far. Bo, please continue from here. From here, we have a quantity multiplied by unit vector i, and that is 1 times 4 minus negative 2 times negative 3 minus the quantity negative 1 times 4 minus negative 2 times 2, all times unit vector j, plus the quantity negative 1 times negative 3 minus 1 times 2, all times unit vector k, 1 times 4 minus negative 2 times negative 3 equals negative 2, negative 1 times 4 minus negative 2 times 2 equals 0, and negative 1 times negative 3 minus 1 times 2 equals 1. So A cross B equals negative 2i plus k. Do we really need to do the step with all the 2 by 2 matrices? That's that step seems a bit excessive. 
Actually, Bo, I agree. I I do think it was useful to show the two-by-two determinant matrices step this time while we were reviewing how to use the cross product. However, in the future, I do not think it is necessary to show that particular step. Okay, now let's do a simple cross product torque example to see how this works. Bobby, please work on this one. Sure. Well, for example two, the position vector equals unit vector i meters. That means the position vector is one meter in the positive x direction. And the force vector equals unit vector j newton. So there's an object with an axis of rotation and a force of one newton is being applied in the positive y direction, one meter in the positive x direction from that axis of rotation. And we are solving for the torque caused by that force on the object, which equals the cross product of the position vector and the force vector. Uh, again, we set up the three by three determinant matrix with unit vectors i, j, and k in the first row. And then, well, the position vector is one meter in the x direction only, so one, zero, zero. And then the next row for the force is zero, one, zero, because the force is one newton in the positive y direction only. Uh, Luckily, we do not have to write down all of the two by two matrices. So we have in front of the i unit vector, zero times zero minus zero times one, and then subtracting the j unit vector quantity, which equals one times zero minus zero times zero, all times unit vector j and then plus one times one minus zero times zero all times unit vector k. That works out to be, well, just unit vector k. I forgot units. Yep. The units for the one times the one in front of the k unit vector are meters and newtons, so meter newtons. Actually, we usually call them newton meters. Correct. Now, remember that the cross product represents the area of the parallelogram created by the position and force vectors. But that is a square, not a parallelogram. A square is a special case of a parallelogram where all four sides have equal length and all four corners are 90 degrees. So every square is a parallelogram. Right. And if the force were at an angle that was not 90 degrees, the area would be a parallelogram, but not a square. Yeah. Got it. But torque is a vector, and this torque is in the k direction. Can area have direction? Billy, yes, area can have direction. The direction of an area is always normal to the plane of the area, which means for the area of this cross product torque, the area is either into the screen or out of the screen. Uh... Because the positive i direction is the positive x direction, and the positive j direction is the positive y direction, the positive k direction, the direction of this area, is in the positive z direction, which is out of the screen. What screen? To confirm that, let's use the right-hand rule. Step one of the right-hand rule is, class, Don't be too cool for the right-hand rule. And step two, Limber up. up. Bo, please use the right-hand rule for this example. Starting with my right hand at the axis of rotation, point my fingers along the position vector towards the force, curl my fingers, in this case 90, 90 degrees, in the direction of the force, and my thumb points out of the screen, which is positive. I will point out that... If you would like to do this with your paper flat on your desk, the fingers of your right hand point to the right in the direction of the R position vector, your fingers curl 90 degrees in the direction of the force, and your thumb points up or out of the page. Up is positive, therefore out of the screen is also positive, and up is the positive K direction. That is exactly what I just did. Correct, that was actually my point. Now, we could also have used the magnitude torque equation. Magnitude of the position vector times the magnitude of the force vector times the sine of the angle between the two. That equals one times one times the sine of 90 degrees, which equals one newton meter. And then 
using the right hand rule, as we just did, we get the direction out of the screen or the positive k direction. Both the cross product torque equation and the magnitude torque equation combined with the right hand rule give us the same value for torque. Billy, please do the next example. Absolutely. Example number three. The R position vector is one meter in the I direction. The force vector is one newton in the negative J direction. This is the same as example number two, only the direction of the force is changed by 180 degrees, right, Mr. P? Correct, Billy. Then we just add a negative in front of the one for the J direction in the force, and that cascades all the way through the problem. And in the end, we just get the torque to be one Newton meter in the negative K direction. And also please use the magnitude torque equation and right hand rule. Sure. The magnitude of the torque equals the magnitude of the position vector times the magnitude of the force times the sine of the angle between those two directions. So that equals one times negative one times uh, no, 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 sorry. It, it's positive one because we use the magnitudes of the position and force vectors in this equation uh, times the sine of 90 degrees or one Newton meter. Um, and so with the paper flat on my desk, starting with the fingers of my right hand at the axis of rotation, my fingers point to the right in the direction of the position vector, curl my fingers 90 degrees in the direction of the force, and my thumb points down or into the page, which is the negative k direction. So we get the same answer. This torque has an area of one Newton meter and is directed in the negative k direction, which is down or into the page. Very nice, Billy. Bo, please do one last example and notice that in the illustration, I have offset the force arrow down slightly so that it does not overlap the position arrow. Example four, the position vector is one meter in the positive x direction. The force vector is one Newton in the negative x direction. We are determining the torque caused by that force on the object. Again, this is similar to the two examples we did before, only the direction of the force has been changed. We have the same three by three determinant matrix, only the force row is now negative one, zero, zero. That means torque equals the quantity zero times zero minus zero times zero, all times I, minus the quantity one times zero minus zero times negative one, all times J, plus the quantity one times zero minus zero times negative one, all times K. Uh, that equals zero. No, yeah, that makes sense. The, the force is pointed directly at the axis of rotation and therefore the force will not be able to cause any rotation of the object, so torque is zero. And using the magnitude torque equation? That would equal RF sine theta, or, well, actually the magnitudes of the position vector and the force vector are irrelevant because the angle between those two vectors is 180 degrees, and the sine of 180 degrees equals zero. We, we get the same result, the torque equals zero. Thank you, Bo. Now, I want to take a moment to go back to the first example. Let's now call it example 1b. Let's replace vector A with a position vector in meters, and let's replace B with a force vector in newtons, where both of those vectors have the same values as when we originally did the example. You can see we can find the torque in this situation exactly as we had before. However, this is a three-dimensional problem where the magnitudes and directions are not straightforward. In other words, if we were to use the magnitude torque equation instead of the cross product torque equation in, the, in this example, we would need to use the Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions to determine the magnitudes of both vectors, and then we would have to determine the angle between those two three-dimensional vectors and- I do not know how to do that. But then we would also have to somehow use the right-hand rule to approximate the direction of the torque. All that sounds really complicated. However, because we used the cross product torque equation, the solution is rather simple and we get an exact direction for the direction of the torque. So please, get used to using the cross product equation for torque. 
Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.